Welcome back to the Express. For the last 27 years, 40,000 people walk across Canada to raise money about global poverty. It's called the World Partnership Walk. Hi, Jazz. It's Arzina calling from the Scotia Bank. I'm fine, thanks, and you? Yes, I'm just calling to remind you that we're starting our walk again this year and would love your support like in previous years. Arzina Nayani is once again campaigning for a cause she's been involved with for 26 years. After witnessing firsthand the poverty that existed in her home country of Uganda, Arzina took it upon herself to raise awareness and funds for the World Partnership Walk, a walk dedicated to eradicating poverty in some of the world's poorest nations. A lot of people think, you know, we are in Canada, there's a lot of poverty here, you know, so why should be, we be helping, you know, uh, people from third world countries, you know. That's been the most challenging part. So when you tell people that, you know, none of the funds are used for administration costs, you know, it kind of starts an interest with them. You know, once you have their interest, you know, you can actually say that, okay, you know what, we do have a lot of help here from the government. Uh, unfortunately, they don't. Once you have their attention, it's a piece of cake after that. Arzina may call it a piece of cake, but what she's done is truly an accomplishment. She's been the World Partnership Walk team champion at her workplace, Scotiabank, for six years, raising more than $15,000. We do talk to a lot of our family members, friends, yeah, we do hustle them. But it's usually fundraising within the branches, you know, we do um, pizza lunches, we do pub nights, we do baskets, we do 50-50 draws, we've done movie nights pizza lunches, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we do actually to raise money, which has been very, very successful. A person like Arzina is uh, like a backbone to our event, because the efforts an individual like her puts into creating awareness of poverty issues and of the event and perpetuate that awareness and gather that support that attends the walk. Wow, this looks lovely. It is, isn't it? This year, Arzina has put together something special for her annual fundraising raffle. We've made up three baskets, one for men, one for women, and another one is a trip uh, for to, a getaway to, uh, to the island. So at the end of the cause, you know, somebody actually wins these beautiful baskets, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's her undying passion to help others that comes through with every fundraising initiative. It's tremendous what she has done. She has uh, put in so much effort and time over the years to bring about that awareness and to raise that money to support the cause. It means a lot to World Partnership Walk and to Aga Khan Foundation Canada to have a champion like that. Thank you for all your efforts, my dear. A champion that we can all be inspired to learn from. I'm Mana Mansour in Vancouver for The Express. The World Partnership Walk is on Sunday, May 29th, and if you want more information, you can go to their website. Now we head to Victoria, where one of Shaw's own recently got a very important award. How would you like to come with us on a dream assignment where we get to meet an entrepreneur, and a visionary, and the man who made it possible for me and thousands of others to live out our dreams. Come along. I promise you will be inspired. Always a lot of weaknesses are overcome by hard work. That's number one. You got to have, and you got to get up in the morning, and you got to have a vision, and you got to have a goal. Meet the man who grew a small cable business in Alberta into one of Canada's largest media companies, James Robert Shaw, who is the 2011 Distinguished Entrepreneur of the Year, as honored by the University of Victoria's Gustafson School of Business. I am pleased and honored to present to you the 2011 Distinguished Entrepreneur of the Year Award. It's uh, because of your employees, I'm even here. It's because of everyone that's done the job and everyone that's worked so hard. And, uh, and yet the word distinguished kind of uh, blows me away 
And it's his humbleness and his belief in his employees that has helped build Shaw Communications into a company that today employs over 13,000 people across Canada. Well, I always liked the words MBWA, managed by, uh, management by walking around, you know, and giving a pe person a hug or asking them about their child or asking them about something in their life and asking them about their job and learning. I'm learning too because they're, I don't know their job. They know their job. J.R. Shaw has received multiple awards and honors, including the Order of Canada and Alberta Order of Excellence. He has also received three honorary Doctor of Law degrees and was recently inducted into the Cable Hall of Fame. And after such an accomplished career, at 76, J.R. still believes that the secret to success is really quite simple. It's hard work and, uh, and, so, and some luck and uh, good people around you. Always hire better people than you. Always hire the best and keep them. JR says he learned this value of hard work from his parents, who also taught him the importance of community service. Today, the Shaw Foundation and the company support a wide range of activities, including the Together is Amazing campaign, the Shaw Ocean Discovery Center, UVix Can Assist program, and the Soup Potholes Regional Park. They even have teddy bears for children. And for this distinguished entrepreneur, all the awards and money in the world will not mean a thing if you don't take the time to give back. I often wondered, well, you know, what are they going to say about me when I'm gone? You know, <laughs> I've got to get rid of that old bugger or whatever else, you know. But, uh, you know, I uh, would like to be remembered, it says at the end of the book, by what you give. what you give, not what you receive. It's amazing to think of how many lives have been touched by this humble man. Thank you, JR, for helping and inspiring me and so many others to go for our dreams. For Shaw TV in Victoria, I'm Karen Algersma. Congratulations from all of us on the Express to JR Shaw. There's lots more coming up. Stay with us. We're going to increase your angle and you're now going to wash out the sand and rock by doing this. After the break, gold panning 101. Side, tilt the front of the pan down. And fun for kids at the Burnaby Village Museum. The Express, this is your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Hairstyling and Color Services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio, loungehairstudio.com. When you wish. When you wish for something wonderful to happen. Sometimes it can make you forget. About the needles. And the pain. And get through this thing. Forget about being stuck inside. You laugh with my family? Go somewhere really amazing and get through this thing. The Children's Wish Foundation of Canada. Imagine the difference a wish can make. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Makeup services for Shaw TV, provided by Beauty Mark. You four guys, shake, shake, shake with water. Get that gold to the bottom of your pan. Welcome back to the Express Yukon Den. You're going to teach me how to gold pan. I sure am. What I'm are we doing? Gold fever. <laughs> We're going to shake this dirt side by side with lots of water. Okay. While you're shaking that dirt, yep. gold being 19 times heavier than the water is going to bomb your pan. Please do not let go when I help you. Stop. We're going to increase your angle, and you're now going to wash out the sand and rock by doing this. Okay. Keep doing that for me, please. Keep going right in the water. Let those minerals roll right out. More of an angle. Stop. There's gold. We oh. see it. We want to hide it. Oh, water. Shake. It. Shake really hard. Side by side. Tilt the front of the pan down slightly. Stop. Do not let go. Wash. 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 Stop. Circle motion. And the yellow is gold. We're going to turn it around. You're going to point with one finger and smile. Gold fever. <laughs>
Can I keep it? Uh, we'll give you some. Definitely. Oh, Not you a problem. can. You're so generous. Not a problem. <laughs> Thank you. More fun for the kids, we head to the Burnaby Village Museum for one of the most popular attractions, the carousel. My name is Bill. I am the lead carousel operator. I have now been here at the Village Museum for these last four seasons. The machine that you're looking at is a 1912 Parker carousel, made in Leavenworth, Kansas. When it came to the uh, Friends of Carousel, of course, they did a whole lot of work to make sure that this machine was as much as it could possibly be uh, put into a pristine operating condition was done, and they did that. My name's Paul, and I uh, am playing with the machine here. It's a Wurlitzer 150. Um, some of them, it's, it's basically a band organ. It's meant to be heard for probably a mile, so it's loud. It's a toy. I really love it. We, uh, there isn't anything else in the music industry that's quite like a band organ. Because it's meant to be gutsy and loud, toe-tapping. It's a true roll machine, means that the music never stops. As soon as this one runs to the end, it shifts into rewind, and this one starts up and plays that, the next roll. And then you can take this one off after it's rewound. You can take it off and put a new one on, but usually you leave them on. It sits and waits. When this one's finished, this one starts up. The instrument is, is all pipes. There's about 150 of them. Um, they have uh, trumpet, um, and they have stop flute violin and um, open flute. I've been doing this, well, I tuned it uh, 40 years ago, and I don't think I'll be here for the next tuning. For me as the uh, lead carousel operator, a privilege to be here and being able to look after it and continue to look after it. The machine is operated today by an electric motor driving the uh, gears through a belt and pulley system and a, a gearbox, a drive shaft, and a mechanism which, as far as I know, driving the machine is very much similar to what it would have been back in 1912 when the machine was built. And get on board and go for a ride. It's great fun. New at the museum is the Burnaby Village Farmer's Market, open Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now for more events coming up in your community, here's your Express Spotlight. The celebration of family at the third annual Philippine Independence Day in Surrey includes music, dances, exhibits, and family-friendly activities. A signature event in Western Canada's fashion industry where 20 models work with top professionals in six weeks of intensive training, photo shoots, workshops, and a glamour fashion show. Take steps to end global poverty at the 27th annual World Partnership Walk. With this family and dog friendly 5 kilometer walk, 100% of the funds raised will go directly to international development programs. I'm Melanie Panetta and from all of us on the Express, thank you for watching on this rainy day in Vancouver. We leave you now with a look at the local art scene. Wedding Bells is brought to you by Carrots, online at carrots.com. Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. 
and we are the wedding bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure to plan the big day. The origin of wedding flowers is cited to the ancient Greeks. Flowers are considered the best way to express feelings and emotion. Ah. So Sarah and I met with Evan O'Ryan, the owner-operator of Flowers. Flowers, one of the most important parts of a wedding. I haven't even thought about. The first thing we discussed was the big B. Budget. How many guests you've got really, really determines that. How many tables, how many bridesmaids and groomsmen. Generally speaking, people spend anywhere from $1,000 up to $20,000 worth of flower. The bridesmaids and groomsmen get drunk, they wreck the corsages, yes. and they leave the bouquet. They just leave it sitting there, and the waiters get to take them home. Pretty much. And that's what happens to your $20,000. What is the most requested flower? All the girly flowers, all the classical flowers are still number one. So roses. What are the masculine flowers? Masculine flowers. Masculine flowers are things such as um, anthe. This is the masculine flower. Not only this, <laughs> this one is too. <laughs> I was at a wedding a few years back and the centerpieces were so beautiful but they were super tall and you couldn't see people across the... And see the cute boy across the table. But if you're going for something that is slightly smaller and you want people to feel really nice and cozy and warm, that's where you really, really have to make sure sightline is always there. If your family members aren't getting along and they don't need to speak to each other, That's tall. a good thing to do. Or you can just do goldfish, which people used to do. Do you remember that? But poor think fish never survived. We then tried to replicate Evan's masterpiece. Oh, oh! But we're working as a team. <laughs> I don't think you were supposed to take the leaves off. Well, I had to. Dun, 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 da. The one thing that uh, was not maintained was really the shape. The next time we saw Evan, we discussed bouquets. Everyone knows that catching one means you're the next to be married. Your real big jewel that dresses you up more than the dress itself is your bouquet. This is more of a seasonal spring bouquet, so it has hyacinths in it, it has tulips, it has orchids that are locally grown. Historically, women would try to rip off pieces of the wedding gown and bouquet for good luck. So brides started to throw the bouquet to avoid attack. Thank goodness we're now so civilized. Yeah, I've wrestled for a bouquet. I once took it out of a flower girl's hand. She caught it and I was like, I elbowed her. I feel like I've caught at least fives. And then it was time for the bouquet making contest. <gasps> oh! I'm finished. Okay, I'm finished. I have to crown a winner? Yeah. You have to crown a winner. I Why? Well, in that case, let's go see if I can catch lucky bouquet number six. You know what they say about bouquets? Are you ready, girls? Yes. Yeah, okay. Woo! <laughs> Still waiting for lucky number six. <laughs> Congratulations, you're getting married. Thank you. To that guy she's sitting with over at Starbucks. No. <laughs> for Shaw TV, we're the wedding bells. Carrots Wedding Bells has been brought to you by Carrots. Online at carrots.com.